about cars, but what's another kind of, uh, let's say, big, well, apart from the ships as well, I guess, uh, let's talk more about uh, kind of planes and how you go around uh, recording uh, planes, because I've seen your, your profile picture and things like that. Okay. A lot of well, planes. Planes are, if you want to do planes really well, it's, it's difficult because you have to deal with FAA restriction. Um, you, like, say, for example, if you get onto, say they give you a great set of planes to shoot and you're at Van Nuys Airport or you're at any towered airport in, in America, you're probably not going to be allowed to get any closer than um, the uh, taxi lines. You know, they, they have these double stripes. But let's say they do let you pass the double stripes. They're not going to let you stand next to the runway with your microphone. Okay? So you have all these restrictions in place that limit what you can do. The, the only thing you can do is either set your mics up and they stand there like I did this in, um, God, I'm trying to remember the name of the airport, so not San Jose, San Mateo maybe. I had to set up a mic array right on the runway or adjacent to the runway and that's how I got to record the plane. So you, you lose that, like when you do a follow by you get really close and you stay on it the whole time. So here I am setting up an array and setting my angles on my mics, you know, anticipating, you know, if it's a pass by, it's going to go like this. If it's landing, it's coming like this. If it's taking off, it's coming like this, right? So you kind of have to start getting guessing your arrays where it's going to be, and then you have to spread it out all the way down the runway, so you're getting different points of like uh, powering up, starting, rolling, hitting high speed, and then lifting off. So you're then suddenly covering 2,500 feet of a runway with different microphones and stuff. So uh, it makes it makes recording difficult because you're not getting it close. And the closer you get to the plane, the bigger it sounds, the better it sounds. So what I found is if you you go to like a um, an airfield that's not regulated, you know they don't have a tower. It's just like some field out in the middle of nowhere. If you get close enough to a plane. Um, on takeoff, landing, or pass by, the closer you get, the bigger and better it's going to sound. And that was the biggest challenge in recording planes: is getting close to them, uh, close enough so that they sound awesome. Um, when they sound medium distant or medium, they just you just don't get the power and and the uh, and the, just how great planes can sound. And what types of planes are you, are you generally recording? I guess it's not big like Airbuses. It's all kind of, uh, is it just all light well, aircraft? In, in my experience, I mean, those kind of planes, you're never, like, you know, you're domestic. If you have people on the planes and you're at a towered airport, you can forget it. I mean, maybe they'll let you set up. If you get permission, maybe they'll let you set up and leave the mics out there for the, you know, for half a day. And then when the they'll let you go take them off the runway. But as soon as people are involved, you're not going to get anything, in my opinion. Most most airports won't even consider it. Um, so the kind of planes I've been recording are, you know, single engine or multi-engine planes on at airports that have little or no air traffic. If there's, like, little or no air traffic, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, we're going to give you permission to re record. If a plane comes, yeah, you have to get behind the taxi line. So that's you know that's some of the cases like where we're trying where we'll uh, institute safety policies is if if traffic is coming in, then our we're on hold and we have to get to save the safe zone. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. Sounds like so, just so much. We've some pretty big engines though, some big radials and things like that. That um, 